have a plumbing need, who are you going to call? A plumber. Otherwise, it's the city of fountains in your bathroom. Isn't that what they call Kansas City? City of fountains. Have you ever been there? Not, not Kansas City or City of Fountains. I know you have. But had one in your own bathroom? It's pretty exciting. <laughs> it certainly seems to instill panic in that moment. If you have a question in your life, about your life, who are you going to call? Not me. Charles Fillmore said, you can go to headquarters. You can talk to the boss. You can call the architect of all life, God. And how are you going to do that? Early I quoted Jesus, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. I like that word, whatsoever. I don't use it regularly. Maybe I should. But the reason I think we don't use it is it's so all-encompassing. What's not included in whatsoever? There's nothing left out. Whatsoever you ask. Believing. There's the condition. You can have anything you want. Anything you desire. You can have it. But you must believe that it's available and seeking you. Remember, what I seek is seeking me. You wouldn't have the desire if it weren't already prepared for you. That's it. Eric Butterworth. He used to play with words, and he used to look at word origins. Desire of the Father was the way he saw that. Of the Father. Therefore, the desire is God, like Emily Cady says, tapping on your heart, telling you it's already there for you. You receive what you believe you will receive. That's a law of faith. Faith draws to you. Charles Fillmore de defines faith as uh, well, the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. The power of your mind to perceive that something, not only that you desire it, but it's available and present for you. And then it has the power to shape the substance, the universal energy, to produce it, to draw it to you in your life. The, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the assurance of things unseen. The desire in your heart right now is something unseen. But faith is that assurance that it's there for you and that you can accept it now. Anything you ask for in prayer, believing. You have to invest your faith in it. You have to invest that energy of mind. And it's not that any law changes for you to bring it about. It's not that substance all of a sudden is created to bring it about. Substance is already there. It's that faith begins to form and shape that substance into what you seek, what you desire. God doesn't change. The availability of substance doesn't change. The amount of intelligence in the universe, it doesn't change. Um, but your faith determines how much can come through you, through your life. 
I've said so many times about faith as an investment quality. It's something you have. You don't have to pray to have more faith. You've got faith. It's one of your 12 divine faculties. It's already there. But you have to invest it in something. And usually, if it's not invested in the presence of something, like you're good, it's invested in the absence of something. You get a large bill in the mail, and you think your finances are a little short. The first thought, your faith goes right into, there isn't enough. When it looks like rain and you're planning a picnic, first thing you may think of is, ah, I, that ruins my picnic, I can't go. Instead of knowing it's going to blow over and everything's going to be fine. We invest our faith in the presence of God or good or the absence of God or good. What your faith is invested in is what you will receive. to receive the guidance and the wisdom and the substance you want. Your faith needs to be invested in the guidance, the wisdom, the substance you want. In its presence, not its absence, its availability. That availability is the awareness that God is able to produce it for you, to provide it. When our faith is invested in the less, what do we get? Less. Less. Whatsoever you pray for, believing you shall receive. I love that statement of Jesus. Sometimes I have difficulty believing it. Because whatsoever is very large. And every once in a while, something pops up in, in me that says, can't happen, God can't do it, I don't deserve it. It's too much to ask for. And I need to stop those as soon as they arise in my mind. Because what are they? They are the lies that comes from the father of lies. Yeah. The human consciousness, the human ego, When you have a desire, remember, it's the Father telling you it's prepared for you. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. You remember Jacob? Well, there have been several Jacobs. Old Testament Jacob. Jacob, who was looking for a wife. Actually, the Bible says for a wife, he kept sheep. I always enjoyed that line. For a wife, he kept sheep. It certainly uh, shoots an arrow in the heart of those who says, those who believe the Bible is literal. But he did keep sheep in order to get a wife. That wife that he desired, her father was Laban. Laban. Now, Laban was a pretty well to do. Uh, I'm going to say rancher. He had a lot of sheep, a lot of goats. He was, he was affluent. And uh, Jacob made a deal to go to work for him for a certain period of time. And then in order to gain his daughter. May I have your daughter's hand in marriage? Well, you can have all of her, actually, if you just work long enough. So he, he, he one day went to, to his father-in-law and he said, Dad, I just assumed that he would call his father-in-law, future father-in-law, Dad, don't you think maybe? Uh, Dad, um, I want to talk to you about my, my pay here. Um, I've, have I got a deal for you? I will... Keep all of the perfect sheep and goats 
the pure white ones, the, the beautiful, unblemished ones. I'll keep all of those in your herd for you. Okay, sounds good to me. The ones that come out spotted or striped or black. Since, you know, they're, they're not as valuable, I'll accept as my payment. Hmm. That's a pretty fair deal. So they made the deal. The first thing Laban, the old man did, was pull out all the striped and all the spotted and put them three days journey away. So they couldn't be his, couldn't be Jacob's. Interesting that he would do that. Yeah. Some people call that Laban's trick. Um, but he was, he was a resourceful guy, Jacob. So he went out and he gathered some, some sticks, some almond, some wood that's called plain. And he began to carve the bark to reveal the, the inner core, white stripes or white spots. And he knew that the, that the animals tended to, to uh, reproduce when they were at, where they were, got their water. So he put the sticks around the water and, and even in the water. And of course, they're the They'd go and they'd drink and they'd see these sticks with white stripes or spots. Do you think it's absurd that he knew that he could affect the birth of the, the, the foals or whatever you call sheep, lambs, yeah, and the baby goats, I don't know what you call a baby goat, kids, yes. But we call kids kids. <laughs> he knew that through visualization he could affect their offspring. You think that's absurd? Wasn't there a period in time in history that people believed that if a woman saw something, uh, something that frightened her or whatever, some, some animal or something Strange, it could mark the child for life? Of course, we've believed that. But there's a principle here. What you hold in mind, he actually staked it out. He did the equivalent that one of the first things I learned in unity. You know what that was? Treasure mapping, visualization. Any of you ever treasure map? Yeah. That was very popular in the 60s. Very popular. I haven't heard about it from anybody in years. But I will tell you, treasure mapping worked. You know the principle, yes? Yeah, you find photographs of pictures of things that are exactly the pictures of the things you, you want or desire. That, Marion, who got me into unity, one day we did one on her refrigerator. And uh, it's amazing the things that happened off of that refrigerator, let me tell you. And uh, I noticed one day that she had put up a picture of a person like she would like to look like picture had no legs. The legs were cut off. Marion had a long history of blood clots that in the 19, early 1960s, she had surgery. The vena cava brings the blood from the lower extremities back to the heart. It's a major vessel big vessel and they were doing vena cava ligations where down in the abdomen they would tie it off 
and cut it so blood clots couldn't get back to the heart. At that time, she said there were about 50 people who had the surgery. Most of them died. She had her legs the rest of her life. Uh, she had a, she had to be careful. She could get leg ulcers and things like that because that all reduced her circulation to her legs. But she kept her legs. But when I saw that picture on the on the refrigerator with no legs, I said, Marion, I'd like you to take that down. Well, why? Well, she doesn't have any legs. Oh. Wouldn't you want to put up a whole picture? Yeah. It's amazing the things that happened off of that. That's what Jacob was doing. He was visualizing. And treasure mapping is a way to, from the outside, bring the picture clearly into your mind and what you desire. But with it has to be the affirmation that it's, it's prepared for me, it's available to me now, and I accept it now. The, your faith has to be invested in it. And that's what he was doing. So gradually, he, he gathered all of these sheep and goats and black goats. And he became a wealthy man by following this, this process. When you go home after service today, perhaps you can find some sticks in your yard. And you can carve yourself some stripes or some spots. Or find something to focus your attention on. By the way, that black thing up there was treasure mapped. And at first I didn't realize I had done that. There was a picture taken of piano on the stage at Cincinnati Music Hall. The picture was from the stage out towards the auditorium. So you were looking past the piano out into the auditorium. I had that on my wall in my kitchen. That used to be on that stage. That was used for the concert artists who were from Steinway or who were Steinway piano players like Rubenstein and Sviatoslav Richter and um, let's see John Browning and I met John Browning when he played here for the Kansas City uh, Symphony one time I was backstage with him introduced to him and his wonderful little papillon dog he had with him and uh I had been told by Steinway that, that he was one of the people who had played this piano. So I told him, I said, old CD 78, that had a, a stencil on the lid, CD 78, concert D, 78 was the inventory number. He said, oh, where is that piano? That was a fine piano. He played at Carnegie Hall. I said, oh, it's at my church here in Kansas City. We had, Nice chat. He was a delightful man. He's, he's gone on now, but uh, it, was, it was a delight to meet him, and he was an amazing piano player. Anyway, it works to be able to see your good, visualize your good, just like the sheep and the goats. They got what they saw. They got what they visualized what was first in their mind. And remember, those, those sheep and goats that were spotted and striped that Laban took away so that Jacob didn't take them. He put three days journey away. Three days reminds you of the Trinity, doesn't it? Do you want old good? that you've already had, got, or do you want your new good? You've already had the other. Three days journey reminds us that first it's in mind, 
And then in mind you get the idea and you grab hold of that idea and you persist it with that idea. And then through the activity of the Holy Spirit, boom, that creative activity of God, it brings it forth into your life as long as you maintain your faith in it as yours available for you. I first heard this story it was an interesting event. Uh, in Cincinnati, there is a National Historic Landmark synagogue called the Isaac M. Wise Temple. Isaac M. Wise was, was a rabbi in Cincinnati before the Civil War. He is the founder of Reform Judaism. And this was his church. He built this. They started it in 1865. It was dedicated August 24th, 1866, 40 years before this building. They dedicated August 24th. This was dedicated August 22nd. It's one of the oldest synagogues uh, still standing. It's synagogue buildings still standing in the United States. And another interesting piece about it is that Sally Priesand, P-R-I-E-S-A-N-D, was the first American female rabbi ordained in America by a rabbinical seminary, and that's that's the one in Cincinnati Hebrew Union Seminary. She was ordained in that temple in 1972. She was the second woman ordained in the world. The first one was Regina Jonas in Germany, 1935. That's an amazing time and an amazing place. The temple the, has moved into the suburbs, but they've maintained this building in downtown Cincinnati. It's right across the street from the huge St. Peter in Chains, which is the basilica for the bishop in Cincinnati for the Catholic Church, They're right across the street from each other. It, yeah, look at that. I wanted to see it before I came to ministerial school. So uh, I had an opportunity. Occasionally, they use it for some special holidays. And I got to go there for a service at night. And that's what it looked like. And I heard the rabbi talk about the spots and the speckles and the trick Laban paid played on, on Jacob, but it's no trick because Jacob represents understanding. And you don't trick your understanding. The understanding knows the principle and applies the principle. And who won in the story, Laban or Jacob? Jacob came out ahead and he came out with a, out, with a wife and it wasn't a sheep or a goat did pretty well in his time. So that's a principle we can use. Whatsoever you ask, believing, you shall receive. Visualize. Hold to that idea. Do whatever you need to do. Affirm. Put up pictures, whatever works for you, to get that so implanted in your consciousness, in your mind, that you see it as yours now. I put some quotations on the back of your bulletin. But I want you to look at the one, two, three, fourth, Chris, this is the second one in the script. It begins with, prayer is not supplication 
or begging, but a simple asking for that which we know is waiting for us at the hands of our Father and an affirmation of its existence. Get that? Not, not begging, not trying to get, talk God into giving it to you. Simple asking for what you know. There's the activity of faith, the perceiving power of the mind to know it's already prepared for you and that your good that you seek is seeking you now at the hands of the Father, which gives abundantly. And then you must make the affirmation a firm place in your own mind that it exists. It exists for you, and it exists for you now. Thank you, Charles. That follows the pattern. Whatsoever you ask, believing, you shall receive.